Welcome to Discovering. It's a rainy night in Escanaba. We're at the Hilltop RV Superstore for this year's WYKX Hilltop RV Deer Pole. We'll take a look at some nice 2017 bucks. And we'll take a look back at some nice bucks from previous deer poles. Also, keep an eye on the lower left corner of your screen for this year's survey. We'll be asking, how concerned are you about CWD in the UP? It's deer season, and it's Monday night. Time for Upper Michigan's very own Discovery. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a longtime lover of northern Michigan. having a wonderful evening here at 20 years of doing the uh, deer poll this year again at Hilltop RV Superstore. A wonderful turnout. Raining sideways when we opened the gates tonight, but it got better. Raining again right now, but we've had a great amount of deer through some sizable uh, racks, some sizable deer bodies, uh, one in 100, over 170 pounds. A lot of youngsters here tonight too. Some of their first kills, some of the repeat kills, and of course the fellowship that goes along with the hunt. You can't deter a youper from coming out to have a good time. Uh, we've, been, we've been doing this now for two decades. Great information, the DNR registers the deer. Of course, they take that information and add it into everything else that they've done for registration. Some additional sponsors that came in this year, but not just two, we give away three guns here at the event this evening. The guns are sponsored again from UP Whitetails Association, two muzzle loaders, and Ward's Auto Body and Collision offered a beautiful 270 rifle this evening. Their first time bringing a quality product like that. And of course, the new company in the Upper Peninsula, Buck Boss, they gave us a whole bunch of product for people to try out, including their, their grain mixture. They have the pellets, which are suitable, again, for winter feeding projects. A great product to try out. They got a full line and are available on the internet. They joined up with us again this year. We also had uh, prizes from the, our, our flagship station, Kicks Country 104.7, and we have our newest hats for the year. A lot of fun, a lot of ways to give away and enjoy the outdoors as we always have. But uh, again, our special thanks to everybody for attending the 2017 Deer Pool at Hilltop RV Superstore. Sitting in my blind, second morning, didn't see a whole lot. I seen a few does and fawns at the bait pile, and just happened to look back behind me in the field behind me, and there was about 15 deer. There was a couple of smaller bucks chasing. I got out of my blind because they were quite a ways away, and leaned off the rock pile, and there was a five pointer and a spike chasing. And then I looked over into the other field, and there he was chasing a doe about 500 yards away. So. Figured out, I might as well take the chance. I ran across the field about 300 yards and chased a doe, he was looking at me. He stopped, pulled up, shot. He ran about 50 yards and dumped over. He was 156 pounds. He was, inside spreads 20 and a half inches. So I got it on Wednesday morning at about 7.30 over by Stevenson. I was just sitting in the blind reading a book and my grandpa saw it. So I stuck the gun out and just kind of shot. <laughs> and this is my fourth buck and the biggest. Uh, I had a three pointer, a five pointer, and a six pointer before. It's uh, an 11 pointer and it weighed 144 pounds, I believe. I hunt with a 243. Um, opening day. This is my first buck here. Um, I think I'm just gonna probably be done for this season and go back next um, year.
One of the best parts about shooting a deer is eating it. Here's a couple of ideas you may not have thought about. Well, there's a, there's a lot of different ways you can prepare your deer. Um, many people throw the heart and the liver away. The heart and liver are excellent. Um, but you don't want to overcook the, the liver. Um, you know, you do it in liver and onions or in mushrooms, however you want to prepare it, but don't overcook it just so it's pink inside. If, the, if you like heart, you can take and hollow out the heart, get yourself some stovetop stuffing, doctor it up with some mushrooms and onions, stuff the heart, put it in a crock pot, and let it go until you can cut it with a fork. It's excellent. The back straps, um, which everybody likes, there's a lot of different ways of doing those, but one of my favorite recipes is to uh, fillet the back strap out so that you have a flat piece of meat, nice square piece of meat. You can pound it or, um, you know, if you have a, uh, one of the jacquard meat tenderizers, you can pound it with that. But if you just have a, a tenderizing hammer, pound it out so it's nice and flat. Take some avocado, mushrooms and onions, and whatever spices you like to cook with. I like to put a little garlic in it and some nature seasoning and uh, make a paste out of that and then spread that over the top of the, of the loin and then roll it up and then wrap it in bacon and toothpick it and then place it on your grill. If you've got a grilling stone, it works best, but if you, if you just gotta place it on the grates, that's fine too. You just gotta watch it a little bit closer because the bacon will drip down and catch on fire. So you gotta be careful with that. But when the internal temperature hits 150 degrees, It'll make your tongue slap your brains out, and it's it's just excellent. There's no limit to what you can do. Um, hindquarters, you can do cube steaks with them. Uh, I recently uh, shot a deer and turned the hindquarters into pastrami. Uh, there's marinades that you can get all the marinating recipes on the internet for making different uh, smoked meats. It's uh, there's no limit to what you can do. You know, the biggest thing I would tell people with uh, taking care of venison is don't parade it around in a car for two weeks <laughs> showing your buddies. <laughs> Get it taken care of and you'll have the best meat you could ever eat. There's a doll in the pile and he is rubbing his eyes on the trees and like scraping and stuff and he came in and he was facing me and I was going to shoot him in the neck but my dad said no to wait for him to turn broadside. Finally he turned broadside and I shot him by his shoulder up here and he didn't take a step. Dropped right there. This is my first one. It was pretty fun. Oh, uh, this is my first buck, 10-pointer. He came in in the afternoon, so I'm with 270. A lot to live up to now. <laughs> I'm 88 years old, and the buck I shot came into the field. There was a door in the field, and the buck had turned away from me. And the next time I looked, he turned broadside, and I fired. And then one shot, he took off the field, and just as it get off the field, he dropped. That's mostly what I always shoot, it's eight point bucks, yeah. I never got anything bigger than eight pointers, but they were nice big bucks, you know, nothing small. This is about the smallest one I ever shot. My mom told me to put my gun up on a deer, a doe that was on the bait pile, and just to see if I could see if it had any horns. And I said it was getting kind of too dark, and then she saw another one coming and she said it might have horns, and I seen horns on it, and I shot it in the neck, and I dropped it right there. Shot this buck this evening around five o'clock. Just prior to that, I was using my uh, grunt tube, whether or not that did any good, but he uh, had about seven does in the field eating, and then um, they all turned their head and looked off to the side, and then I looked, and there he was.
So I'm uh, Dave Maxson from Iron Mountain, and I hunt out of the uh, Casey's Camp in Northland, and I got this last night at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, come in chasing a doe, and that was his demise. By far the biggest buck I've ever shot. Well, uh, 651, I uh, shot this one, uh, came in, 11 pointer, 16 and a half inside spread, dropped pretty much right there. I went down to get him and uh, the three pointer came out and charged at me. That was a little interesting, it got within about 15 feet. Went back up to the blind and uh, 40 minutes later, this one came out, nine pointer. And this one has a 17 and a half inch spread. Two real nice bucks. I hunted an hour and a half and I was basically down an hour and a half this year. Seen a lot of bucks crossing. It was interesting, an hour and a half, put it that way. This is a nine point. Uh, I believe this one had a 17 inch bed. So we've got an eight point here, Brad model shot, Neil model had this one. But yeah, all out of the same area and they all were opening day. Four of them were opening morning and one in the evening, opening day. But all these bucks here came from uh, the same place, did real well. Uh, this one here is uh, an eight point with an 18 inch spread. I got this buck on opening night. I was hunting with my dad and we were watching uh, a buck in the field and there was other deer with them and watching that guy and there was like I think eight deer at the bait pile. So we were watching back and forth and I decided to look back at the bait pile and deer came out. And all I told my dad was, oh there's horns. So he grabs the binoculars and you're gonna want this one. So grabbed my gun and shot him. 18 inches on the inside. My biggest buck so far. later he came out and he stood behind a tree so I fired a shot just to get him moving and he sat right in the middle of the lane after that dad tried to cock the gun and it got jammed so he gave me his gun then I shot him again and he got all hunched up I shot him again and he dropped and brought him home well I uh, shot him second day at 11 30 in the morning I was walking, still hunting, and uh, jumped it. And I seen it had a nice rack because it was running off, and I got a shot at it. And I tracked it for about a quarter mile. And when I caught up to it, it was already dead. And uh, shot it in Dickinson County. It weighs uh, 205, and rough score at 147 and a half, I believe it is. I was out hunting, and um, there was three does. Um, they were going crazy, and then. Um, they got, they, they looked, they snapped their heads back and then they ran. And then my dad said, get your gun, get your gun. And then um, I got it and then we seen the rat come out and I got it in scope and I shot and I got him. <laughs> this is my first one. It's opening morning, got out to my post, freezing my butt off, seeing nothing. Went to lunch, got back, it was about 12 o'clock, went down and did a little, uh, made a little uh, scrape down in there to get my get some bucks sent out and um, about 20 minutes later I got back in my blind looked down in there downwind this buck came in shot him in Men Menominee County I was sitting in my blind and I thought I could hear some footsteps coming in he ended up coming in a little spot about the size of a basketball and he was facing me 
I picked him out and I made a shot and he just dropped like a ton of bricks. Fell right there and I was like, I was just really, I'm still excited and I did it, yeah, I shot it yesterday. <laughs> I was sitting in my stand, just sitting there, and finally a doe came in, and then a little while later, um, the doe just comes charging in in my bait. It's, then this big buck comes up behind her, and it's, he, I couldn't, I had to blink a couple times to make sure, it, like, I wasn't dreaming, and finally I realized it was real, and then I pulled the hammer back, waited a little while, and he started running away, and I shot him on the run. Then he ran about 20 yards, long shot. They scored 147, like the horns. It was only weighed 127, though. Small body. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. You ever wonder about the best way to get rid of all those old rifle shells and shotgun shells you got laying around the cabinet? I talked to Steve at UP Hunters Gunsmithing to find out. Virtually every uh, household that uh, has hunters in it, uh, there, there gets to be an accumulation of old ammunition that get cases that are very badly corroded or that are damaged, that the bullets got pushed down in, particularly from the lever action guns. A person needs to dispose of these from time to time uh, and, and should but you don't want to just put them in your trash because there's a danger to the people at the landfill or wherever the trash is going to end up at. And so you, you should dispose of them properly. So get yourself a, 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 an ice cream pail or a, a coffee can, put a bunch of WD-40 in it, and you can buy WD-40 in bulk very inexpensively, and submerge the shells in that, leave them there for a week, after that, they'll be inert. The primers will be uh, penetrated with the, uh, with the WD-40 and will not be a viable primer any longer. And then they're safe to dispose of just in your trash. Just drain them, put them in with your trash, and send them to the landfill. And nobody will try to use these, these shells that should not be fired because the the powder is not going to be stable in them. The primers aren't going to be stable. You don't know what's going to happen when you, when you fire them. Well, we got in the blind about 7 o'clock and in less than an hour it showed up alone. And at first its butt was facing us, then it moved and then it started shaking and then it went behind a tree and then I shot it. <laughs> I was hunting with my grandpa. He shot the eight. <laughs> um, it weighs 180. This is my third. I think I'll be okay with <laughs> a six or an eight. <laughs> The buck was coming in from this side and I couldn't see it. All I could see was his breath. So he just kind of walked nonchalantly, walked over to the doe and I'm like, oh my God, look at the rack. I got excited and I had to shoot while he was walking and I've never done that before. So I texted and I said, I shot. And he said, stay, stay, where, stay put, stay put. And I said, I think he's huge. So when he came up, it was, he was down and he said, oh my God, that is big. So he's, he hasn't been real forgiving the whole time because he does all the baiting. <laughs> And he puts the heater in the blind and everything, and I just go out and shoot the trigger, and I get the buck, I guess. So that's what he told me. He said, that's my buck. It's a fabulous thing and something that we just absolutely love to do. And I'll tell you what, I'm really surprised with the turnout here tonight. With the wind and all the rain, it has just been an absolutely fantastic turnout. When you come on down here to the Buck Pole, this whole dealership is open. So you can come inside, we serve some food, we serve uh, hot coffee, apple cider, hot cocoa for the little kids, uh, food to eat. You can walk around and look at all the fabulous campers that we have inside this big indoor showroom that are all set.
set up. We love doing this. A lot of big animals, a lot of big bucks, and we are having an absolute fantastic time. We have some great people here tonight. Uh, fresh first time from the Delta County Credit Union. The girls are out here helping out hand the prize bags out and circulating with the crowd. They wanted to get involved as part of the community spirit they have at Delta County Credit Union. I had my camera by my boat stand a few times, and he was Never wanted to show up when I went and sat, so uh, I have a spot about a 40 from my bow stand, and I just seen a lot of rubs and scrapes, and I was just hoping that was a sign of him, and I sat open in the morning about 9.30, decided to show up chasing a doe, and I tried not to mess up on him, and I got him, so. He's about 19 on the inside, eight point. It's the biggest buck I've ever shot, so. A lot of people going home happy because they just enjoyed the time out here, as everybody does here in the Upper Peninsula, so. Can't say more than the thank you from the bottom of my heart to the Hilltop RV Superstore and all of the wonderful sponsors that made this program possible and given me the opportunity to come out and really enjoy the fun and the fellowship that comes from being a Uper. Great turnout tonight. We didn't expect to see as many deer as we did. Now Dave Wellman is with us and he's going to announce the top buck of the evening, winner of a $300 gift certificate from North Country Legends Taxidermy, Tim Garenchen, I know, has been here on the grounds tonight. And here's our winner. Pete LeBeau, 129 and 7 eighths is the winner tonight. Pete LeBeau, are you still here? Pete LeBeau, you are the winner of the big buck this evening. And here's the guy that's offering the certificate towards a taxidermy. What do you think? Fantastic buck. Absolutely. Pete, your impression. Uh, yeah, I was pretty happy with it, yes. And I'm very happy with the uh, gift certificate. Congratulations on behalf of Trails and Tales Outdoors Radio, Hilltop RV Superstore. Well, that's it for this week. Be sure to check out 906outdoors.com where you'll find the 906 Fishing Report, TV6 Weather, Shopping, and more. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next week right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering 906.3.